at JCPenney's Memorial Day sale, sizzling deals are on with storewide doorbusters all weekend. Or bring home savings up to 50% during our Memorial Day home sale. Save even more with your coupon. And for all former and active military personnel, enjoy an extra 10% off in-store. Just show a valid military or VA ID at checkout. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 530. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters valid 526 through 530 and excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com for details. Hi guys, hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn, that's me, Dr. Wendy Dearborn is in the house. Well, welcome to another episode of You and the Laws of Attraction. Guys, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn and I'm going to be your host for the next 60 minutes or so. Today is Saturday the 10th of April and the year is 2001 and the hour is 10.30 a.m., And it is a sunny, sunny, sunny day here in Las Vegas. I mean, it's really sunny. It's beautiful. It's what I would call a beautiful, quintessential spring day. Absolutely gorgeous. We don't always get spring here in Las Vegas. We really don't. It it sometimes goes from what we call winter, what we call winter here and other people call winter wherever they are. Mm, it's two totally different things but what we call winter here sometimes it goes from winter to summer and there's nothing in between so anyway guys my name is Dr Wendy Dearborn welcome to the show today we are going to be talking about think before you say yes or no your life depends upon it and I'm actually going to be talking about memes and I'll explain all of that in in a hot second. But anyway, guys, I hope all's going well with you. Can you believe this time last year in 2020, we were in Las Vegas at any rate, we were on a serious lockdown. I mean, it was like a a ghost town. You know, you see those Westerns and you see the tumbleweed just sort of like rolling down the street. I mean, it was just quiet. You could hear a pin drop outside. Nothing was moving. People weren't doing anything. And the most that people were actually doing. And this was all, you know, sort of like COVID related. The most people were doing was actually shopping, but everything was closed down. I mean, um, Las Vegas is one of the, uh, uh, what you call it, entertainment capitals of the world. I mean, it's a 24 hour a day city. It really is. And this is because of the casino industry and they, they were closed. You'd drive past and you'd see those um, makeshift barriers where you couldn't even go in and turn around. It was just closed. What I would say about the entire COVID pandemic and in particular the lockdown, I really hope that people took the time out or made time to really think about what they wanted for their life, what they wanted to do in their life. While it wasn't an ideal situation the way that it turned out, I really do believe that it could have been, would have been, and has been for many people beneficial. A lot of people have hmm, found their stride And yes, I know if you had children, it was, uh, to me, I don't even know how some people coped with that. I I really don't. Having kids, schooling, and not just the parents, grandparents have been been involved, aunties, uncles, all all sorts of things. And that's the other thing. It it actually has forced families to pull together in in a certain way. But that being said, I hope you took the time out to really think about what it is that you are wanting for your life. And that now as all the bans and the restrictions start to be lifted, you can start preparing and creating a strategic plan, utilizing the universal laws of attraction, if you will, 
to implement it. At JCPenney's Memorial Day sale, sizzling deals are on with storewide doorbusters all weekend. Or bring home savings up to 50% during our Memorial Day home sale. Save even more with your coupon. And for all former and active military personnel, enjoy an extra 10% off in store. Just show a valid military or VA ID at checkout. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 530. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters valid 526 through 530 and excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com for details. So anyway, guys, once again, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Welcome to the show. Every time I say something or I change the subject or there's something that I really want you to key into, you'll hear this sound. All right, I'll I'll ring the bell. That being said, it's vitally important that you do your own due diligence. Whatever content or whatever information I share with you This is based upon my experience. Now, you can take it and mold it. You can take it and toss it away. Whatever you do is about you. Whatever you do is about you. It's not about me. It's about you and how you utilize information so that you are able to create the life that you say that you want to live. So anyway, guys... Let's get to it. All right, let's get started, guys. Think before you say yes or no, your life depends upon it. Your life is made up of, and before I go any further, guys, one of the things that I didn't actually say was what the show is about. This show is about you, it's about me, it's about us creating the lives that we want to live through the power of our conscious choice. And choice is the very first law in the laws of attraction. Without choice, you don't have anything. Without choice, nothing happens to you. Choice is everything. So it's vitally important to understand that as you move through life, your choices are creating the life that you're living. Once again, the laws of attraction and it is the laws and not law of attraction which has been erroneously taught to people the laws of attraction start out with choice you have to choose okay guys vitally important now let's get back to it okay so i'm backtracking just a little bit here Think before you say yes or no, your life depends upon it. Your life, as I just indicated, is made up of the choices you make. Bottom line, your life is made up of the choices you make. Whether or not you do, whether or not you don't, it's all a choice. And your life is the end result of each and every decision, each and every choice that you make. You get to choose what you want for you and whether this is whether you're under duress and or not whether you feel that um you are being pressured and or not the end of the day is you get to choose for you you cannot blame other people for your plight or what or what has happened to you or where you've wound up or where you're going the only person who is, if you will, to blame will be you. And I don't believe in the blame game because it just, it just, um, it it just takes time. It, it, It takes away from what it is that you can be doing so that you can manifest what you want. Choice is everything. Choice is everything. And let me just say this before I, I go get into what the show's about, which is memes, by the way. Um, It's vitally important to understand that people can influence you. But the only way they can influence you is if you let them. Is if you let them. Your life is all about you. If you've listened to any of my other podcasts, you will definitely hear me say this 
I can't breathe for you and you can't breathe for me. I can't breathe for you and expect to keep you alive indefinitely. Like you can't eat for me and expect to keep me alive. That's not how that works. Your life is about you. So memes. That's what I want to talk about today. M-E-M-E-S. Memes. And if you've been on the internet, I guarantee that you have seen a meme. at some sh- In some shape, some form, you've seen a meme. Well, an internet meme or internet meme, which is what it originally was called, is now commonly called or simply called a meme. And it's a type of idea, type of behavior or a style that is spread via the internet. And it is often spread through social media platforms. And the meme itself started out as something that was humorous. And I remember when they when they hit. I remember when memes hit and became really popular way back in the day. And they were, they were humorous. Some of them were really, really funny. Um, a meme in itself, and I'm going to explain what they actually are in just a second, but a meme is spread from person to person and once again via social networks this could be blogs or via email or via internet news sources again it is something that is all about the internet at internet as it was called an internet meme they are they related memes are related to various um existing internet cultures or subcultures Um, And are often created or spread via various websites and once again via various social media platforms. Okay, now I'm going to get into exactly what a meme is and the types of meme that I want to talk about. What I want to explore today are what I call spiritual memes, new thought memes, uh, um, Uh, thought memes as in the power of your mind memes spiritual memes whatever phrase you want to add to it okay but today I want to talk about spiritual memes and I'm encompassing everything because a spiritual meme can be a prayer it can be anything I want to encompass all of that so uh, let me let me just ring my bell ring my bell right okay a meme is a powerful image with words or it can be just the written word or just written words and they're written or the picture and or the picture with words or just the words are written in a way that connect to the reader on a spiritual conscious or subconscious level A meme is written with the intention of reinforcing a thought process, reinforcing a concept or a belief that the reader already has. Or it's written with the intention of bringing to the surface some new thought process, some new concept that the reader might want to explore. A meme is written with the intention of being uh, satirical, inspirational and as I put here at the very least motivational in short a meme is written is a written affirmation or prayer by someone that um, by someone else that you connect with based on what is going on in your life and more importantly for me based on where it is that you want to go in your life so a meme and I'm talking about spiritual memes okay guys there there are so many different types of memes out there but I'm talking about spiritual memes as they will apply to you and your spiritual growth and the laws of attraction so once again a meme a meme can be written excuse me a meme is written with the intention of being um funny inspirational and at the very least motivational in short when we're talking about spiritual memes 
we are talking about a written affirmation or prayer and actually sometimes a query asking a question by someone else that you connect with based on where you are in your life at the moment and once again for those who know me more importantly where you're going in your life now in regard to memes and the laws of attraction what I want to say about this is the laws uh, uh, on the laws of attraction is this many people have a kind of peripheral idea of how the law of attraction works the current understanding of the workings of the law of attraction has been shared by many noteworthy authors people gurus etc etc the biggest problem people say that they are having with the law of attraction is they're either not getting what they want or they can't work with the law of attraction consistently. In fact, some people say that they can manifest what they want, but they don't know how they do it. And really and truly, I believe that most people kind of fall into that category mentioned above that many people can manifest what they want, but they actually don't understand the workings of it which means that they don't, they're not always able to um, get the results, get the results that they want. I know there have been many times when I, and maybe you, have set your mind to achieving or experiencing an end result. And I know for me, and perhaps maybe you, nothing or no one will get in the way of what you want. And hey presto, It's a bit like magic, it happens. And then there are times when you employ the same attitude and energy and the magic fails abysmally, nothing happens. There is no hey presto and they're sure there there is no happy ending. This experience isn't only happening to the novice or the beginner who is learning how to use the law and hear me clearly guys, you understand I'm saying the law here, not the laws, but, um, this experience isn't happening. You know, this experience isn't happening to the novice and or the beginner who is learning the law of attraction. This experience is happening to the noteworthy, the authors, the speakers, the guru, the gurus, the lifers who are daily, who are working daily and consistently on the laws of attraction to create the life that they want to live. So what I'm saying here is there are people who are authors of the laws of attraction, authors of how to use it, speakers on how to do this, and they cannot consistently use the law of attraction to get what they want. Well, let's start breaking this down. At JCPenney's Memorial Day sale, sizzling deals are on with storewide doorbusters all weekend. Or bring home savings up to 50% during our Memorial Day home sale. Save even more with your coupon. And for all former and active military personnel, enjoy an extra 10% off in store. Just show a valid military or VA ID at checkout. Shopping is back. JCPenney. Coupon valid on select styles through 530. Some exclusions apply. Doorbusters valid 526 through 530 and excluded from coupons. See store or jcp.com. For details. And I know you hear this week in, week out, month in, month out, but let's start breaking this down. There has truly been an oversimplification of how the law of attraction works. One of the greatest misnomers that has been perpetrated against any user of the law of attraction is not giving them a full picture. And this is one of the things that I found very challenging, especially earlier on in my life with some of the books that that have been written. They don't give people the full picture. And erroneously, all of us have been taught that it's the law, the law, singular, of attraction. When in reality, it is the laws, plural, of attraction. Laws, plural. L-A-W-S, plural. Florence Scrovel Shin in her book, The Game of Life and How to Play It, which is a brilliant book, If you are truly, um, for me at any rate, if, if you're looking for a book that is uncomplicated and just really speaks to the heart of the matter, 
The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scrovel Sheen, and I call her Auntie Flo. Um, this is a, a good place to start. But anyway, in the book, she states that we are always creating laws, plural, for ourselves by the words we speak and then what we choose to do. So by the words we choose to speak and then what we choose to do, what actions we choose to take. And this is so true. You can see in your own life, you think something, you choose it, action, and then you get a reaction. So let's dissect this a little bit more for further, for clearer um, understanding. Just a, li- a little bit more clarity. All right, guys. Creating a law is a rule of construction or procedure that comes into being based upon your spoken ro- your spoken word. Your words are so powerful that they literally morph into a prescribed action. By your spoken word, you are creating rules of con- conduct that govern your life. All right, guys. By your spoken word, you are creating the sandbox in which you live. You are creating the square upon the life or the square upon which your life is built. You're creating that foundation upon which it's built. You, by your spoken word. And while today's podcast isn't about the power of the spoken word, I mean, I've done several podcasts with this. I did this with my co-host, um, who's my sister, several, several, we've done several podcasts on this. And again, while today's podcast isn't about the power of your spoken word, indirectly it is. You see, your word is you. When you see your reflection or a shadow cast by the sun, you are seeing your word made flesh. When you look in the mirror, And you see your reflection, you're seeing you. When you see how you are showing up and reacting to to the world, you are seeing your word in motion. You're seeing your word in flesh. But anyway, moving forward, understand from this point on that it's the laws of attraction and not the law of attraction. The law of attraction is part of the laws of attraction. And yes, it is one of the pillars that is important to you being able to consciously manifest. And I say, when I say it is one of the pillars, it it is one of the laws. You see, guys, the law of attraction is an organizational binding force. And the function of this law, okay, guys, hear me clearly, hear me clearly. The function of this law is to bind together other laws that create an intentional stream of consciousness that transmits to the point of creation to aid in the manifestation of that which you have chosen to experience in your life. And just for an FYI, the law of attraction works in tandem with the law of magnetism. Many people say that the law of attraction is about magnetizing. That's a whole different law in itself. The law of attraction is an organizational binding force that binds together all the other laws that you need to create that intentional stream of consciousness that is transmitted to the point of creation that aids you in manifesting that which you have chosen, the choice you have made, that which you have chosen to experience in your life. Now, I mentioned the law of magnetism. The law of magnetism pulls together and it attracts to you the laws, the other laws required for creating a conscious energetic stream or a conscious energy stream for that which you want want to manifest in your life. 
And while we're speaking about the universal laws, as I hear, as I say here, now hear this, everything that has ever happened and that will ever happen to you, whether you deem it good or bad, has happened because of a, because of a choice. And I said this earlier. Now that doesn't make what you've experienced right or wrong for that matter. It doesn't, it doesn't, mm, it doesn't make it that it should have happened to you. And, you know, you know, if something heinous has happened, no, it doesn't mean that by me saying this, that I'm condoning anything that has happened to you and your family. That's not it. I'm not condoning bad behavior. I'm not condoning heinous behavior. I'm not condoning any of that. What I'm saying to you is what has happened has happened because of a choice, because of a choice that you have made. And many people are horrified by this concept. Many people are literally horrified by the concept of what's happened to me has happened because of the choice I have made. That has nothing to do with whether or not it was right or wrong or whether you're condoning it and or not condoning it. What it has to do with is you understanding that when you make a choice, you own it. When you make a choice, you own it. And many people truly are horrified by this concept. And yet it's true. You see, people get caught up with the emotional side of things. Oh, this is so bad. and, And it is. Or, oh, this is so good. And it is. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. You see, the law of choice is also known as the law of free will. And it is a binding and irrevocable contract with the universe that initiates all that we do, all that we experience, all that we have and conversely don't have in life. The contract is simple. Whatever we do or don't do is a choice. It's as simple as that. It's not talking about, oh, is this a good thing? Oh, is it a bad thing? That's an emotional judgment call. The contractual agreement states, we are bound by ownership, responsibility and accountability for all that we do and or don't do. That is choice. But guys, let me... Let me get back to memes, all right? Because, you know, I I just got off my soapbox. So let me get back to memes. I see memes, which I had explained to you before, is a picture, an image with words, or it is a a written, written words that have a concept or they're sharing something with you conceptually or they're asking a question, they're making a point, but they're, they're done in such a way that it's something that captures your attention because it is a thought process that you have. It's where you are in your life. It is about you at this moment in time. And it's relatable. I suppose that's where I'm going. It's relatable. Now, I see memes all over social media by people who are speaking on, people who are experts on, people who are telling other people how to use the laws of attraction and people who are teaching courses on how to use the law, the laws of attraction. You know, you click the link and you can go to their course, etc. And I read these memes and for, I, I can't tell you how long. This has been many years I've been reading some of these memes and I say some of them and people are using number one people are using um the laws or sorry the law of attraction as a segue into you getting a numero 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 numerology reading or an oracle reading which you know they're using it as a source of um advertising I see memes that come under the guise of providing people with affirmations and prayers so that they can invoke, if you will, 
the law of attraction to give them what they want. I see memes that tell people what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. I see memes. Uh, look, I, 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 I read memes. I, I read memes. And for several years, I've been reading these memes and saying to myself, these are so counterintuitive to, to what I think they are trying to do. These memes that I read are truly counterintuitive. I read a meme, um, and this had to have been earlier this week. Yeah, I think that this had to have been earlier this week. And the meme said, and let me just say this, guys. I post memes daily. I, I post memes daily. Spiritual memes. I post memes daily. Memes about the laws of attraction. So, and I have done, I mean, I post, what? at least 365 memes a year, sometimes more, okay? But that being said, I I saw this meme and it said, the most valuable thing you can make is a mistake. You can't learn anything from being perfect. Click yes if you agree. What the hell is that? What, what, What is that? I read that and I started laughing. What is that? The most valuable thing you can make is a mistake. What? So in order for you to get what you want in life, you're going to always have to make a mistake. For you to do something, for you to actually ace something and you do it to perfection, you hit that note singing, you secure that deal. You hit that tennis ball and you ace it. You can't learn anything from being perfect. Click if you agree. And you know, you see all these thousands of people who have clicked, you know, and they've agreed. You know, what? one of the ones that, that really makes me laugh is money is coming to you soon. And I'm going to talk about that a little later on. Money is coming to you soon. Click if you agree. Can you tell me what's wrong with that? Your soulmate is on the way. Click if you believe. Everything is going to be good soon. Believe it, speak it, trust it, affirm it. What's wrong with these pictures? Your health will be restored this week. (coughs) Excuse me. Type yes to affirm. You know, and I read this stuff and I'm like, really? Like, really? And the list just goes on and people are just happily clicking. What people don't realise is that they've just invoked, (laughs) they've just invoked the universal law of reversed effort, but also the law of neutralisation. You see, guys, by clicking, you've owned it. You know, your health will be restored to you this week. Well, why not now? Why not now? Why why, why sometime this week? It's so ambiguous, but that's not even that's not even the issue. The true issue is that it invokes the law of reversed effort. And I spoke about that. In January, I spoke about that in February. Yeah? So, and the the universal law of neutralization. And as I've just spoken about that, I'll just do this one. The universal law of neutralization makes the energy that you are giving to your, your intention, the thing that you want, ineffectual. (laughs) <laughs> it, 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 it is no longer effective it's like it dilutes it to the nth degree I mean it, 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 
guys, I, I, I suppose I, I see this, I, I see these memes and I see all these people clicking. Sometimes I read what they've also added, you know, they've clicked and they said this and yes, yes, you know, my soulmate is on, on the way and yes, the money that I need to pay my rent tomorrow is coming soon. How does that work? You, you've you clicked yes. You have told the universe that it's okay for it to come soon. It's so important, guys, that you think before you um, you actually uh, assign yourself to something or you claim something. Think before you neutralize all the work that you've done. Think before you say yes or no to anything. Think before you claim it as yours. Much of what is out there in regard, especially memes, I'll just stick to memes. Many of the memes that are out there, they are dubious at best and downright negative at their worst. The universal law of reversed effort, and I spoke about this, that January, February. So here we go. The universal law of reverse death states states that you neutralize your affirmation and or prayers by thoughts and beliefs which are negative and or counterintuitive to what you are wanting. The universal law of um, reversed effort works harmoniously with the universal law of um, neutralization and the law of neutralization works with the universal law of reversed effort, although each law can stand by itself. So you may think that an emoji that represents how you're feeling at the moment, right? How you feel at the moment, whether you are hurt, whether you um, are angry, whether you're sad, whether you're in love, whether you need a hug, whether you, whatever it is, you may think that that, I said emoji, guys, please forgive me. Actually, speaking of which, no, 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 I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. You may think that that emoji and the meme represents how you feel. You may feel that as an emoji, you, you've given something the thumbs up. You may feel that it doesn't impact your world but it does and guys I've just segued into emojis so just roll with me by using an emoji you are actually claiming that you are in a, in agreement and or in an ali- in alignment with what you are reading it becomes the I am it becomes the I am of you So, when you read a meme and it says, click here, give a heart, a type yes, click give a heart, give the thumbs up, do any of the things that you do with emojis, okay? You are laying claim to that. By using, by typing the words yes, by using an emoji, you are claiming that you are in agreement and in alignment with what you're reading. And you do that and it becomes your I am. I am in alignment with the most valuable thing. And I'm not just so you guys understand that. The most valuable thing you can make is a mistake. You can't learn anything from being perfect. Really? Click yes if you agree. Type yes if you agree. Give me the thumbs up if you agree. You, you, you've now bought it. See, the bigger picture is this. Your desired manif- ma- manifestation isn't coming into form. Okay? Your desired manifestation isn't coming into form. And if it isn't coming into form, 
And you have been affirming morning, noon, and night, praying morning, noon, and night for days, months, even years. And it's not coming into form. You're going to say eventually that, of course, the law of attraction stuff doesn't work. Or you're going to say um, that, you know, God doesn't want this for you. Um, you're going to say maybe God isn't hearing my prayers. Maybe this isn't the right time. Um, and again, now you're <laughs> creating something else for yourself. Because you're stating that there's a deficit. And one of the reasons why what you're wanting isn't coming into manifestation. The thing that you want, the picture is this, the bigger picture is that you aren't using the laws, plural, of attraction correctly. You're not even using the law of attraction correctly, if the truth be known. It's not being used correctly. You see, guys, the law of attraction, just let me say this again, is an organizational binding force. And the function of this is to bind together all other laws that are needed to create an intentional stream of consciousness that is then transmitted to the point of creation to aid in the manifestation of that which you have chosen to experience in your life. In order, in order, I'm just going to, guys, look, I'm just going to segue off of this just a hot second, right? In order for the laws of attraction to work for you, there are things that you need to do to make sure that your foundation is correct. Okay? And some of the basic things that you need to do, you need to know what it is that you want. And I know I'm going to say this because I had written this in some notes further along, but you need to know what you want. Okay? You, you really do need to know what you want. You need to know what you want without reservation. Then you need to experience having it. You don't experience the wanting it. You experience the having it. And that is the difference. Anyway, anyway, guys, so you're working, you're doing your spiritual work, as I call it. You're meditating, you're affirming, you're praying um, uh, to get, you know, to, to, to what it is. To, you're praying to get what it is that you want. You get to the point and you're like, you say to yourself, I'm doing all this work. I'm doing everything that I need to do. And this stuff, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You know, I, I, I'm praying, I'm affirming, you know, whoever said, do do this three times a day. This one said, you know, bury St. Christopher in the back garden, make sure it's faced in east, blah, blah, blah. You're doing all this stuff. You are doing what you consider to be your spiritual work. And the stuff that you want isn't happening. And, and it's not coming to you. And you're like, this is bogus. It doesn't work. Well, you're wrong. It does work. The laws and the law of attraction does work. Consciously and unconscious manifestation works. But above all, conscious manifestation works if you are doing it right. And it works with the same accuracy and proficiency as the air that you breathe you inhale as the air sustains the life that you are living or your life that keeps body and soul together. That's the precision at which 
the universal laws of attraction work. They work with the same accuracy and the same precision and efficiency as the solar and lunar energies. And these energies provide the earth with everything that they need to live and to thrive and not just to sustain life or survive. That's the mode that people need to get out of. Or at least I believe. You need to do more than just survive. You need to do more than just survive. You need to live and you need to thrive. So why is it not working? Because every time you turn around, you're negating what you want. Every time you turn around, you're negating what you want. And it's the little things that you subscribe to, like, um, here we go with the memes. I'm back on my memes. Money is coming to me soon. Click. Well, you know that you've been doing, you've been doing your work. You know that you've been doing your hour of power. You know that you have, um, been affirming and affirming correct, correct, uh, correctly. You know that you have been living in the feeling of having money, having just what you need, just what what you want. You've lived it, so you know it. But every turn, but at, at every turn, you're negating it. But at, at every turn, you're doing something that is counterintuitive to it. And as I said before, it's the little things that you subscribe to, like that's nice, but. I am, you fill in the blank. Oh, that's nice to, to, you know, to have a home like that. But I'm never going to be able to achieve that. It's nice to dream though, but I'm never going to achieve that. Wow. You know, I've been affirming for a new car. I've seen the car. Uh, I've even, in my mind, you know, I've even driven the car. I felt it go over this bump in the road and I know that if it was any other make, it would have really rattled my teeth, but it was just smooth. It just said bump and it just kept going. If only I could afford it. You know how many people have done that? Or choosing to purchase something cheaper because you're afraid to spend the money because You might need it later. You might need it later. How many of you have done things like this? Or something similar? And I know you have. Okay. I know you have. I know you have. And just so we are all on on, on the same page. I know I have. I know I have. So let me just say this, and this show isn't about this per se, but everything really ties in. And that's something that I really want you guys to start thinking about um, as you as you move into using the laws of attraction um, consistently and effectively with precision and accuracy. Everything is interlinked. Everything, although everything can stand alone, like the law of attraction stands alone. The law of reversed effect stands alone. The law of neutralization stands alone. The law of free will stands alone. The law of magnetism stands by itself, but they are all interlinked because they all support each other in creating that which you say that you want. So let me just say this. We are all emotional beings and we are all subject to the mercurial effects of our emotions. Yeah. Today, your husband putting the spoon, and I always use this, this must be something that happened because I always use this reference. Today, your husband putting the spoon on the countertop instead of in the sink or better yet, washing it, putting it, uh, washing it, drying it and putting it back in the drawer may make you laugh. And tomorrow, it can turn you into a raging, homicidal, psychopathic, sociopathic murderer. Yeah? That's 
suppress our emotions. And the thing is, you can't stop how you feel. You can't stop how you feel. But you do have total control in over how you choose to respond and how you choose to react to how you feel. You can be as angry as all get out. But you have control over how you choose to respond to that anger. How you choose to react to that emotion that has come up. So with that in mind, moving forward. When you see a meme, before you answer it with an emoji or typing yes, ask yourself, is this meme in alignment with my prayer and or affirmation? Does it negate or is it counterintuitive to the claim that I have made to the universal creator known to me as God for the thing that I say that I want? Have I, by, by, um, by claiming this, this meme, by claiming these words, by claiming this picture as mine, by clicking an emoji or typing, have I negated, have I stopped, have I put a block on the manifestation process that I have put into action. Is this what has happened? You see guys, when you run interference by neutralizing your desired manifestation, what happens is you get a partial manifestation. You get a partial manifestation. So uh, I, I I want you here. Okay, let me let me just do this. Once again, moving forward, when you see a meme or anything for that matter, before you answer with an emoji or say yes or click and write yes or what have you, ask yourself: Is it in alignment with what I have asked the universal? For creator for with what I am living with in my mind the thing I'm living it does it negate it is it counterintuitive to the claim that I have made to be living in and breathing that which has not manifested for me yet is it cut is it cutting it off I recognize that the sensory evidence can say that you don't have the money, you don't have the house, you know, you don't have the money in the bank, you don't have the house, you don't have the car, you don't have the car because you don't have the money, you don't have the health because you're not feeling well, you don't have the love interest because they're not there. I recognize that the sensory evidence can say, yes, you don't have it. I recognize that. And your bank balance can attest to the fact. Your empty garage can attest to the fact. Living where you're living can attest to the fact that you don't have what where you want or you're not living where you want to be. And yet you can live that feeling of what you want with the expectancy of I have it, I have the money. You can live it in your mind. When you align yourself to a meme that states the money is coming, you have just negated that affirmation. You have just negated all the work that you have done to say that you are living this in your mind, in the theater of your mind. You have boosted your sensory evidence that states loudly, you ain't got no money. You don't have the money. You are no longer living in the experience of having money. You've moved to the place where you don't have. But as they say, let me find this thing here. As they say, 
Money is coming to you soon. And so you've moved to the place where money is coming to you soon. Money is coming to you soon. It's coming to you soon. Well, what does that mean? It's on its way. What 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 does that may mean? It's on its way. It's on its way means that it may never arrive. It can continue to be on its way. You know, anytime I see that or I hear that, I, it reminds me of um, a phrase my husband uses, you know, like being uh, cast out into the uh, outer darkness, i.e. space, for a thousand years. You know, you, you see people and they, they, they don't want to get... Um, booted out off of the spaceship because they'll just roll around out there in outer space forever and ever and ever and ever and ever it's the same thing it's on its way forever and ever and ever it doesn't mean anything when you see a meme like that or somebody's telling you to use this as a prayer or an affirmation it doesn't mean anything it's too abstract it's like the jamaican saying miss on come for the most part, all it tells you, that phrase, I'll be there soon, or I am, I will be there soon, both the same thing actually, I'll be there soon, all it's telling you is that I'll see you when I see you, but I don't know when I'll see you, but I might see you, but I don't know when, that's what it's telling you. So it's important to know, and I said this a little earlier, it's important to know that your knowing is resolute and it becomes your belief. And speaking of which, I, I, I spoke to somebody recently and they said to me that they don't believe, they don't, they don't believe that you, excuse me, they said to me that they, that you don't need to believe for the law of attraction to work. Well, I would say this, you don't need to believe for the law of attraction to work, but you do need something for the laws, plural, of attraction to work. Whether that's um, living in the, and I mean, where you are living it, you're living in the expectancy and you have received it, which is about the feeling of having the thing that you want to manifest or living in the knowing that you have received the thing that you want to manifest. And when I say living with the living in the knowing, I'm talking about you're living it. Yeah, it might be make believe, but it's so make believe that it feels real. So the workings of the universal law are resolute. There are things that have to be in place for you, for you to manifest. And you must know without a shadow of a doubt that the thing that you want is already yours. It must, look, you must know that it's yours with an unshakable, unbreakable, crystal clear clarity. Absolutely nothing or no one can change your thought process because it has now become you. That thought process is you. You, the unseen, has become the seen within you, even though it hasn't manifested physically for you. You need to know. You need to know this. And this is part of the workings of the universal laws of attraction. And whether you call this belief or not, It is a knowing that must be in place. Now you can do your own due diligence. You can look for that. You can do whatever you want to do. But I know that this is a fact. This is a universal law. So guys, moving forward, be very cautious what you attach and align yourself with. If your prayers are not being answered, if your affirmations are not being answered, for for that matter too, for those of you who are wicker, if your spells are not being answered, if if you are not getting the results that you 
Know that you are working towards and you're doing the work correctly. You're doing the work correctly and that's the other thing. You're doing the work correctly and it's still not happening. You need to look at what you're doing in your everyday life. What are you doing that is counterintuitive to what you want? What are you doing? Are you invoking the universal law of reversed effort? Are you invoking the universal law of neutralization? Are you using the universal law of attraction like the universal laws of attraction? Do you understand the power of your choice? And are you exercising your divine right to choose? You see, once you've clicked a meme with with an emoji or whatever you do, type whatever you do, it has become a choice. Your choice. And as I said earlier, The universal law of choice is a binding and irrevocable. Guys, you can't get out of that contract. It's a binding and irrevocable contract that you have made with the universe that initiates all that you experience, all that you have, all you don't have, all that we do in life. The contract is simple. Whatever you do or don't do is a choice. But whatever you do or don't do is a choice. Whatever you don't do or do is a choice. Do you get that, guys? It's a contractual agreement and you are bound to it. It's, it becomes part of your DNA, your soul DNA, your physical DNA, your spiritual DNA. It becomes who you are. And you're bound to it. Ownership, responsibility and accountability for all that you do and don't do. So, guys, before you, literally, before you, Type yes and or add a little sweet emoji. Guys, think before you do this because it could change the course or the trajectory of your life. Well, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Uh, thank you for spending this hour hour with me. It's been just over an hour. Um, I'll be back uh, next month, I'd imagine, uh, with another episode of You and the laws of attraction. And uh, I am, and I, I know because my niece, I said this in my last um, podcast, um, my next podcast I am going to do is going to be talking about individual laws of attraction. I'm just going to run through some of the individual laws. Uh, you know, like I said, the laws of secrecy, the law of science, the, the law of rebound. There's, there are so many laws out there. And as Florence Grove Shin said, we are constantly making laws for ourselves by the words we speak, the thoughts we have, and the energy and emotion that we pour into them. But anyway, guys, um, thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. You have been listening to an episode of You and the Laws of Attraction. Guys, may the universal creator bless you in all ways and always be blessing you. Until next time, guys. Peace.